Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Blog. And today we are gonna talk about Venom number six. And you know what? I was gonna stop recording today, but I figured I could probably squeeze another two in uh, because this way I have videos for the next few days for you guys. So hopefully you guys are enjoying them. And this is Venom number six. This is the Cosmic Ghost Rider variant by Humberto Ramos. I do have the main cover too, uh, but I will give that code away in an upcoming video. I left it at the comic store for them to hold it for me and because I only had enough money today for one of them. So I picked this up and uh, I will share that code right now. Boom. First person to put that code in will get a copy of Venom number six. This is the end of the first run called Rex, uh, told by Donny Cates and drawn by Ryan Stegman. And it's really, you know, I, like I said, the concept intrigues me. I'm not against, you know, a, a cosmic, you know, background to Venom. Obviously he's from outer space. It makes a lot of sense. But some of the links they go to in this, uh, I haven't really enjoyed. And some of the retconning, even as minor as some of you might think it is, uh, is big enough for me to where I feel like it cuts off paths to potential future stories. And I've just always been told as a storyteller, especially in comics, you should never really do that. You should never cut something off so cleanly to prevent yourself from opening a door that might you know, need to be reopened at some point down the line. So it feels like uh, Donny Cates is, is kind of steering away from uh, personal stuff with Eddie to tell these big you know, uh, cosmic adventures. And uh, although we are apparently gonna get a more personal story in the next arc, so I'm glad to hear that. So again, like with any writer, I'm gonna try to stick with it. I was thinking about giving up uh, this run because it's just not really you know reaching out to me I'm not really enjoying it as much as I thought I was when Donny Cates was first announced uh, and then each issue has kind of pulled me away a little bit a little bit more at each time but this one I kind of liked that it. it had enough in it to where um, I feel locked in it was pretty much a battle the whole time and it was kind of a good one and so for that reason and where the book ends up and leaves off I am definitely going to continue to read, at least for the next few issues, especially with our friend Ibon Coella coming on. I want to see what he draws, and I want to see this like more emotional story that they're apparently going to tell with Eddie Brock. And because I, I'm dying for an Eddie Brock story from these guys and from this creative team, at least from Donny Cates, because in this run, I felt like you didn't really need Eddie Brock to tell this story, and I still stand by that, even at the end of this issue. You could have replaced him with maybe not Matt Gargan so much with the way this ends, but Flash Thompson, and it would have been the the same story and that I don't like I, I want Eddie Brock stuff and I want things that are specific to Eddie Brock and things that only his character could do and uh, I felt like this book doesn't really have a ton of that uh, in it but in this issue it kind of did a little bit and so I liked it so there is some spoilers if you haven't read it yet make sure you turn away now because we're gonna get into some spoilers but it picks up again boring intro no image there they need to really work on that um, but they had this like, you know, 16 panel grid, uh, you know, very Watchmen nod ish. You know, I know they always make jokes, Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman. They're making the joke that their book is better than Watchmen. But of course, when they say that there are actual fans that come out and say, well, it is, it's way better than Watchmen. And uh, you know, it's just like, okay guys, calm down. You know, <laughs> it's like, this is Venom and it's fun. Uh, but uh, but comparing it to Watchmen, it's, it's like comparing apples to oranges. Um, so anyway, this uh, this here has this great image here, although I think it's pretty goofy on some levels. It's almost like a 15-year-old uh, child came up with this, or teenager came up with this concept of, oh, I want to do Venom, and he's going to have guns and bazookas sticking out of him and everything, and, and uh, that's how we're going to fight this null creature, just with like a ton of weapons. And at first I was like, oh, this is dumb. It's got like a rail gun on him on his side there. It just screams of like the bad parts of the 90s of comics. Uh, but there is some little neat tricks up uh, Venom's sleeve that I liked and that I appreciated, and little nods that Donny Kate wrote in, which I thought were kind of cheesy and not handled well, but I still appreciated nonetheless as a continuity person. Um, there was uh, this moment here, we have the, the giant creature busting through, uh, but then it's pretty much like, I don't need to really go over too much in this book, it's a fight. It's pretty much a fight the entire time, and for that reason I kind of liked it because this creature is extremely powerful, and uh, I was surprised that, you know, with this creature crashing back down into a building in the middle of, the, of New York City, that uh, another hero didn't show up, uh, Jessica Drew didn't show up, Miles Morales didn't show up. I was kind of surprised by that, but it is a neat, intimate battle, and I like the location overall. I got to give Donny Cates some credit here. Uh, the final battle, the whole thing, pretty much from this page on, like page five or six onward, 
all takes place in the room that Eddie Brock was strapped to a chair in when Rex was interrogating him in issue two. So we're in that room with the furnace where Eddie Brock was with, the, you know, the furnace was behind him and that furnace was used to, you know, forge steel beams. So it's very, very hot uh, in there. And that was what Rex was hoping to use against uh, Eddie. And that's why now in retrospect, we know that Rex is a symbiote, why he was sitting away from the furnace. Uh, so that way he wouldn't reveal that he was actually a symbiote. Uh, so all that, look, you know, kind of makes a little bit more sense now and kind of plays out more interesting wise um but in this you know that's the where the whole battle takes place and then you have this moment here where eddie brock uh is holding up the jaws of the grendel and uh the uh, rex is like hey i have some weapons i'll take care of it and it uses its own arms creating like two extra arms for venom and it grabs these uh grenades and toss them into the mouth of the creature but then they go out of their way to say that the grenades are something he stole from shield and shield confiscated them from a group called the jury uh, so i like that they just mentioned the jury i thought it was handled in a pretty cheesy way but i kind of like that they mentioned them because i hope that donny cates or someone brings those characters back and upgrades them uh, to battle venom in new ways in upcoming books that would be really neat to see i always like those characters a lot um, so yeah, so then you have the uh, grenades go off and Venom pulls back and then Null is revealed and then it just becomes a battle between Null and Venom the, for the rest of the book and Venom's using his, you know, his laser gun, his rail gun on him uh, and it's, you know, not even hurting or phasing Null that much and Null is just kicking the living crap out of Eddie the entire time. Even so much so that Null standing over Eddie is able to pull the symbiote off of him and he knows that the rex symbiote is inside too and that's what he wants he's like look i'm gonna get what i want i'm null i'm a god and you're just a creature and uh, and you don't stand a chance so he pulls eddie symbiote right off of him and eddie brock stands back again like near the furnace and he's looking up and he's like you know what i don't plan to die today and neither does my symbiote and you see as Null pulls back and he has all this you know the, the two symbiotes attached to him all these lights start going off and uh, apparently one of the tricks up uh, uh, Rex's sleeve is that he knows that Null is has an allergy to light so he pulled all these light grenades uh, which I thought was a really smart tactic because that's a weapon that normally you would be like well who would that possibly work against vi uh, villain wise other than blinding them temporarily but a creature that is born in darkness the light uh, artificial light you know does hurt it so all those go off and they uh, you know really mess up Null and they weaken him big time and what happens is the suit uh, get, manages to get away from Null and rebond with Eddie and Eddie says where's Rex and he's like Rex is still in there he protected me from the blast and from feeling the pain that Null felt and he separated me from the you know from being connected so he saved me um, but he's still in there somewhere, Eddie, and we gotta we gotta help him. And Eddie's like, all right, well, let's you know we're gonna do the best we can. So Noel, you know, magnifies. He's like, you freak, you know. He's like, you you think that you can take me down with these stupid little toys? And uh, you know, and and by bonding, you know, you gave me Rex back. Now I'm gonna be at full power. You're so stupid, you know. And he's like, I I'm gonna come after you right now. And then as he leans in to kill and get the killing blow on Eddie and Venom, Rex shouts out, Hey kid, I got him. And Rex pulls himself out of Noel and wraps around Noel and, you know, ties him up, you know, uh, bounds all of his arms and uh, features so that he can't hurt Eddie. And he says, kid, you know, we let him here for a reason. Open up the furnace. Let us in. And so Eddie, you know, once again, not really doing much. He's being told what to do in his own final battle. So again, I got a little irked with this. Um, so again, you know, Donnie Cates, you know, try to work on that a little bit. Try to make Eddie actually be the catalyst for things in future storylines. I understand he's in over his head here and he's trusting another being, but still like, you know, we, I need him to make more decisions. Uh, so he, uh, you know, he couldn't even figure out to open the door on his own. Someone had to tell him. Um, so he opens up the door and, uh, and Rex leads Null in there and he mentions how hot it is in there and that it's, you know, it's a uh, very, very close to touching the sun in a certain way and that it will kill Null, but they have to keep him contained. So then Eddie puts his back against the grate. He does make this decision on his own, thankfully. And uh, he puts his back against the grate and he's holding the grate shut, but the symbiote can't handle the pain from the fire so it starts to separate from him and then it does and it says eddie we, you know we we can't bond with you uh it's gonna kill us both and eddie says look bond with me he's like heal as many wounds as you can that i'm hurt you know inflicting on myself right now because he's starting to catch on fire like eddie's on fire here and he's like you know just bond with me and put out as many you know pain you know shut off my pain receptors whatever you got to do do something but we got to make sure this bastard dies and so the suit's like okay eddie i'll do it and then it bonds with him 
and it's like Eddie there's too much pain in here I can't heal you all at once it's too much for me uh, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna die Eddie and Eddie says no hang on a little longer we're almost gonna kill him we're almost gonna get there and then they finally do Noel's arm separates it burns away and the suit says Eddie he's dead and so is Rex like the hundred percent they're both dead and then Eddie says oh thank goodness and he falls to the ground and he says suit Thank you. Thank you for keeping me alive. And he's burnt like to hell, man. I mean, he's if he's going to live, it's not going to be pretty. Um, and then the suit says, Eddie, I forgot to tell you. So overall, I did have some gripes with the storyline. I feel like some of the retcons, Eddie Brock's sister, some of the other things they put in there, I thought were, you know, unnecessary. I felt like you could have still told the story and you could have still had Rex say that Eddie Brock was not an only child, that he had a sister, because that seemed to have no effect on this story. But I'm guessing it's because Donny Cates has future stories he's going to tell where he goes into Eddie Brock's past, because as we saw in the earlier issues, uh, he had a memory where he was like almost hit by a car, and apparently that's tied to some kind of childhood tragedy. So uh, we don't know what Donny Cates has planned, but I hope he kind of retcons himself or fixes that mistake and mentions that Eddie Brock does have a sister because I feel she played a very important part into forging Eddie Brock into the man he was because he was constantly looking for approval from his family. His dad, who uh, never really approved of him, and his sister, who constantly told Eddie that he was the reason their mother died because Eddie's mom did die in childbirth while giving birth to Eddie Brock. And so to me, she's an important part of his origin, so I hope Donny Cates finds a way to bring her back and we can ignore that little line from his earlier you know issue um, and then also I want to see more of Eddie Brock making the decisions to do things make you know putting himself out there telling stories that need him involved to tell because I feel like again if you would have replaced Flash Thompson or anyone else in the suit the story still would have been the same because it was mostly a symbiote story and an origin for the race of symbiotes which I also felt on some level was unnecessary it felt like Ridley Scott explaining where aliens come from and I don't need to know where aliens come from. It's scary knowing that somewhere out there in space, these things just exist. And sometimes that's just enough for people. And so when you go back and explain things and over explain them, it kind of takes away some of the uniqueness or mystique of them. And it kind of takes away what people in their minds have already come up with for themselves. And, uh, and that's where I kind of rail against this storyline. But overall, I think the concepts are neat. I like where it's going. I'm curious to see what the next issue holds now. I thought this was a pretty strong issue, considering it was just a battle the whole time, but it at least was an interesting one, and there was a lot of stakes involved, and I kind of liked where it ended up. And I want to see, and I, it was neat to see Eddie Brock make such a sacrifice at the end of this, hurting himself and risking losing the symbiote once and for all in order to kill the god of the symbiotes. But of course we know Null is probably not dead because this is the Grendel version of him and apparently the real Null is somewhere on Clintar being trapped within the planet. So I'm sure at some point a year from now when Donny Cates does this big crossover, we're gonna go back to Clintar and we're gonna you know rip away the layers of the planet and expose Null and probably battle him at that point. Uh, but at least this version of him and the Grendel version is taken down. So uh, at least that's what I've taken from the story. If you guys took something different, let me know down below and if you feel differently about the story obviously let me know down below because I know some of you guys are really enjoying it and I want to hear your thoughts if they're different from mine let them know, be known down in the comments down below and we'll continue our conversation down there so again as always thank you guys for watching my channel like share subscribe all that fun stuff and I'll see you in the future peace